Safely and permanently immobilizing radioactive liquid waste is a key mission at the U.S. Department of Energy's Savannah River site. Savannah River Mission Completion operates all the SRS liquid waste facilities for the Department of Energy. The mission is to treat the waste and close the high-activity radioactive waste tanks at the Savannah River site. Part of the liquid waste system supports continued chemical separations operations of H. Canyon. However, the majority of the highly radioactive waste is a legacy of nuclear weapons production created during the Cold War. About 34 million gallons of this radioactive waste are now stored in numerous underground carbon steel tanks at SRS. The waste has millions of curies of radioactivity and requires permanent isolation from the environment. The radioactive waste is primarily in two forms, sludge and salt. The sludge makes up less than 8% of the waste volume, but contains nearly half of the curies or amount of radioactivity. The remainder of the waste is in the form of salt which is about 92% of the volume and approximately half of the radioactivity. Two key facilities safely treat and dispose of the salt and sludge wastes, the Salt Waste Processing Facility and the Defense Waste Processing Facility. The Salt Waste Processing Facility, or SWPF, is treating the salt portion of the waste. It began operating in 2021. The salt waste undergoes a two-step decontamination process at SWPF. The first step removes strontium and long-lived actinides from the salt waste through the process of absorption. The second step removes the radioactive cesium by extraction. This part of the SWPF process uses a special solvent and over 30 centrifugal contactors to mix and separate the solutions. Both the absorbed waste and the extracted cesium solution are transferred to the Defense Waste Processing Facility, or DWPF, and combined with the sludge waste for vitrification. Then the remaining salt solution that has been decontaminated is ready for treatment and final disposal at the Saltstone Production Facility. Saltstone is produced by adding dry grout feeds to the decontaminated salt solution. This grout solution is then pumped to an engineered state-permitted unit called a saltstone disposal unit, where it hardens to form a final disposition form. The saltstone disposal units, or SDUs, are a critical part of the liquid waste system, as they are permanent disposal units that will hold solidified decontaminated salt solution at SRS. Three megavolume SDUs have been built at SRS and several more are under construction. The large-scale units can hold 33 million gallons, equivalent to the amount of water that would fill 55 Olympic-sized swimming pools. DWPF is treating the sludge portion of the waste. It began operating in 1996. DWPF converts the highly radioactive portion of the liquid waste, the sludge, into a solid glass form suitable for safe, long-term storage. Scientists have long considered this glassification process, called vitrification, as the preferred option for treating long-lived radioactive waste. To turn waste into glass, a sand-like borosilicate glass called frit is mixed with the waste and sent to the plant's 75-ton steel and ceramic melter. In the melter, the waste frit mixture is heated to nearly 2100 degrees Fahrenheit until molten. This molten glass waste mixture is then poured in a pencil-thin stream into stainless steel canisters to cool and harden. Each canister is 10 feet tall and 2 feet in diameter. Typically, it takes a little over a day to fill one canister. A filled DWPF canister weighs about 5,000 pounds. After a canister is filled, the exterior is blasted with a frit water mixture to remove contamination. A stainless steel plug is fitted into the neck of each filled canister, and the canister is welded shut using a current of 250,000 amps applied for 1.5 seconds, 
while 80,000 pounds of force simultaneously rams the plug into the neck of the canister. The resulting weld is as strong as the 3 8 inch thick stainless steel canister itself. More than 4,300 canisters have been filled at DWPF since it began operating. A specially designed shielded canister transporter moves each sealed canister one at a time from DWPF to interim storage buildings adjacent to the facility. At the storage buildings, canisters are lowered by the transporter into seismically qualified underground reinforced concrete vaults. The storage buildings are being modified to double the capacity by stacking two canisters in each storage position, exceeding the total number of canisters projected to be produced by DWPF. Double stacking canisters instead of building another storage facility saves at least $100 million in taxpayers' money. The canisters will be safely stored at SRS until a federal repository is established. Once the salt and sludge are removed from the waste tanks, final tank cleaning and operational closure can begin. The tanks are first cleaned to ensure they meet the long-term closure objectives. Next, the tanks are isolated from the liquid waste system by deactivating transfer paths and disconnecting normal services. A specifically formulated grout is then poured into the cleaned underground tanks. The grout binds residual radioactivity and finalizes the closure process. It's the goal of Savannah River mission completion to safely remove the waste and close the remaining waste tanks by the year 2037. Until then, all the liquid waste facilities will continue to work together as an integrated and interconnected system. By executing the mission, the liquid waste team at the Savannah River site reduces radiological risks to employees, surrounding communities, and the environment, ensuring a safer future for everyone.